Welcome to Ortho Eval Pal, where we help you build confidence in your orthopedic evaluation and management skills. Hello, everybody. This is Paul from Ortho Eval Pal, and uh, I wanted to show you a real classic uh, case of plantar fasciitis. We're going to talk about how to diagnose it, and then we're going to talk about how to manage it. So this is Keith, and uh, the, you know, the first thing I want to say is thank you for letting me do this, Keith. I really, really appreciate this. We wouldn't be able to do this if we didn't have willing patients to show us their problems. And in the, in the process, we're going to try to help him out and uh, hopefully get him better. So here's the story. Keith is 53 years old. He has had left foot and heel pain for approximately one year. He works in the woods and walks miles and miles and miles. So he's in different types of shoes and boots. And over the last six months has spent over $500 in temporary orthotics, different types of shoes. He's done the runner stretch up against the wall. And um, that seems to be the only thing that gives him a mild amount of relief. He has done everything from uh, a foot roller, rolled it and, uh, and really no improvement and progressively is getting worse. He has had x-rays and the x-rays were negative, correct? There was nothing wrong. Um, and so that is, that's a bonus because after a year you need to start wondering does he have something else going on. He points to his pain as being right here at the calcaneal tubercle. And when I palpate, and I'm not going to agitate him anymore today because I've already done that plenty, um, it, he's most tender at the calcaneal tubercle, a little bit at the proximal plantar fascia, and his heel is tender both medially and laterally and that's probably because he has so much inflammation at the calcaneal tubercle he, the periosteum is probably getting inflamed also he has no signs of Achilles tendonitis and he has a negative tenels so he does not have any signs of a, a medial a calcaneal nerve entrapment he has good sensation of his feet and he is diabetic and taking medication for that but has good sensation um, so here are the key things that you need to remember when looking at plantar fasciitis. Number one, we always ask the question, do you have any pain in the morning when you first get up and take your first couple steps? And here is the unusual part. Are you tender when you take your first couple steps in the morning? Oh, a little bit in the morning. Yeah. Know, first thing, but then it's, it gets worse as the day goes on. This gets on. worse as the day goes on, and it's probably because you're just on it a lot and putting a lot of pressure. Okay. So he does have that typical morning complaint of discomfort. And here is the next thing, which I find most significant, okay? Look at his range of motion. Now, he has about 10 degrees of plantar flexion. I'm going to dorsiflex him, and I'm pushing quite hard right now, and you're not, you're, you're not pushing against me, are you? No. Okay, so he has a considerable tightness of the calf, limiting his dorsiflexion. If we can gain 5 to 10 degrees of dorsiflexion, that would be ideal. Okay, and research shows that in order to gain 5 to 10 degrees, you have to stretch on a slant board, which is the most effective way to stretch, 4 to 5 times a day, 30 seconds each time, with 5 repetitions each time. So he's stretching up to 20 times in a day, okay, trying to get that dorsiflexion improvement. And I'll guarantee you that once you gain four, even 4 to 5 degrees, you're going to start to feel better. Okay, now he's starting to develop metatarsal discomfort because he's not putting any more pressure on his heel. So he's pointing his toe, he's putting all the pressure here, which is actually causing more strain and more shortening of the calf muscle. So we want to optimize his calf mobility. We want to put him into a custom orthotic to prevent the arch from collapsing. And the other thing I want you to look at is, let's take a look at the bottom of his foot right here. You'll notice some callus formation. He's putting too much pressure on the second and third metatarsal, so we're going to offload that with the orthotic. Also notice, if you take a look at the patient, when I lift his leg, he wants to go back. All right, His hamstrings are super tight, so I'm going to teach him how to stretch his hamstrings. And there is um, correlation between tight hamstrings and uh, a tight plantar fascia and plantar fasciitis. So, morning pain, pain around the heel and proximal plantar fascia and a super tight calf. Now, last thing I want to look at is your foot posture when you're standing. So if you could stand for me, and you will notice that this foot here on the left side wants to externally rotate a little bit more, and he has more foot drop or navicular drop on this side than that side. His big toe is turning inward and he's callusing over here. That's a classic sign of a tight calf and hamstring. And as a result, he's bearing more weight through the arch making the plantar fascia pull at the heel even more. 
So we're going to support that arch, we're going to optimize his calf and his hamstring flexibility, and I think just that alone will really help him along. All right. So if you have any questions or would like to see more videos related to the foot and ankle, knee, back, shoulder, any other part, go to www.orthoevalpal.com and we'll see you there. We hope you've enjoyed this video and for more awesome content, go to orthoevalpal.com. Can't wait to see you there.